This is the Seven Figure Agency Podcast. Discover the strategies and techniques to grow a highly successful and profitable digital marketing agency with your host, Josh Nelson. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to today's special session. We're going to be talking all about something that's really important for all of us as digital marketing agencies, which is how do we generate better SEO results and rankings for our clients, right? This is a constantly moving target. Um, I'm super pumped to have Lane Howe and uh, Matt Henry from Quantum Agency with me today. They're going to be unpacking some really cool strategies and techniques. But before we dive into that, I just want to share my screen. I always like to start with why. Like, why is this important? Why do we need to make sure we're on the cutting edge? Why do we need to make sure we're paying attention to how things are changing and how things are, are moving? Um, here's, here's the problem as I see it and as I've experienced it in our agency as we've gone to seven figures and kind of gone up and then lost some clients and gained some clients. Um, the biggest, the biggest challenge I see is that some, sometimes the clients don't get ranked, right? You can have the best strategy in the world. Like you know exactly how to structure the site, the title tags, the H1 tags, the meta descriptions, the content on the page, the off page optimization with um, you know, the right citations and helping them get online reviews and kind of build up their authority and their online profile. Um, but sometimes you can do one thing for one client in one market and get a tremendous result and the same exact thing for a different client and get a different result. Give me a one in the chat if you've experienced this. And this is like something that kind of drives you nuts. I know it drives me nuts at some level. It's like, yeah. So like inconsistent results, especially for their money keywords. Like if for us, we work with plumbing companies. Like we need them to rank with someone when they type in Dallas plumber, right? Or plumbing company in Dallas. Um, and, and, and when we are unable to consistently generate that result, it can be extremely, extremely frustrating. Place type frustrating if, if like you felt that way and it's like, ah, I just want to tear your hair out at some level. Yeah, Pete, frustrating. The other thing that I think is, is really important along these lines and is like a big component and why we need to go deep on this today is that sometimes it's hard to show tangible ongoing activity, right? Sometimes we do the on-page optimization, we claim the directories, we've done all right, and because they've got this authority already in their market, they're ranking really well for the most important keywords. And it's like, yeah, you're ranked. You know, what activity do you need to see, right? And then, But they still want to know, like, what did you do for me last month? What are the key deliverables? What are you doing to move the needle? Give me an activity in chat. Sometimes you like, you're like, you know, why do you need to see activity? Like what activity do you need to see? If the phone is ringing and the rankings are there, like what else, what else really matters? Yeah, like sometimes we get to solve for this whole activity and reporting of the key deliverables. The other thing that I know I personally deal with, you know, and, and being, you know, relative, really successful in this agency world as an SEO company is this constant fear that you're not doing enough um, or that your strategy just isn't best in class. Right? You just, there's always got to be some ninja strategy or hactic on the other side, whether it's on SEM Journal or SEM Rush or Google Search Engine Land. Like, there's got to be something that you're not doing, right? Put a question mark in the comments if you ever feel like you're constantly trying to recheck yourself to make sure you're not leaving stuff. Right? Lots of us. Lots of <laughs> lots. So I'm, I'm not the only one with this uh, with this uh, feeling. Um, and, and bottom line here is if you can't get the client's results, if you don't have confidence in what you're doing and that what you're bringing to the table is best in class, um, and you can't show activity, right? Even if they are ranking, if you can't show the activity and prove to them that you're doing something that's going to move the needle, clients cancel, right? That's, that's the bottom line. And whether you're an SEO agency and it's one of your core deliverables or you're a digital marketing agency and it's just something you do as an additional thing to move the needle, if you can get better at consistently delivering these results from an SEO ranking perspective, and you can show activity to back it up, you will retain the clients at a higher level. Bottom line, right? That we don't want the clients to cancel. We want them to stay. Give me a yes if that's what we're really looking to solve for today. Better results for the clients, better activity metrics, and ultimately, better client retention. Yeah, absolutely. So here's the opportunity, and I'm going to get off my soapbox and I'll hand it off to Delane and Matt so that they can really dive into this for us. Really what we want is for the clients to get ranked for their most important keywords organically 
and on the Google Maps for, for a wide spectrum of keywords. We want to have a very clear ongoing strategy where we can show the activity, where it's not like we set it up well once and we kind of forgot about it, but where there's something consistently being done for all of the clients, whether they rank on the first page or not, um, or we can show them, look, here's what we're doing. Here's the activity that we're bringing to the table. And ultimately, where you can feel confident as the lead of your agency or as the person in charge of SEO at your agency, confident that you're doing the right thing, that you've got a world-class strategy, and that you're just executing at the highest level possible. So this is what we're looking to solve for today. Really, we can do this. I promise you, we'll have an answer to the what have you done for me lately question. We'll have an answer to, look, look here's what's happening with your rankings. Both of those things are going to result in better retention. So just put retention in chat if we're clear. Like this whole SEO dialing strategy is to improve our retention, improve the outcomes that we bring to the table for our clients. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good, we're, we're all on the same page. So without further ado, what I want to do is I want to, I want to introduce you guys to Lane Hauk and Matt Henry from Quantum Agency. Uh, they've been instrumental in helping us really dial in our SEO strategy move the needle for our client rankings um, and the strategies and systems that they've helped us implement um, have been extremely impactful. So um, I was pumped when Lane volunteered to come on and kind of share some of his ninja strategies and techniques with you guys. So give me a, yes, Danny's got it. Give me a let's go in the chat if you're ready to dive in deep. All right, Lane. Let's roll. Let's do it. All right, awesome. Well, guys, thanks for, Josh, thank you for that great introduction. Really appreciate it. Um, really appreciate being a part of the Seven Figure Agency um, and just the great, great peer network that we have within the Seven Figure Agency, all the experience, advice, insights, you know, uh, it's all, it's been amazing a uh, year and a half for us being with you and Jeff and the whole team. Uh, really excited about the addition of Jody uh, to the team as well. So, hey, thanks for um, the, <clears throat> the intro. Let's roll. Um, so first of all, guys, um, let's see here. There we go. Let me get my screen all set up. And Matt's going to be manning chat. Also, um, uh, Matt and Josh, as I'm going through this, if you guys have anything you want to just interject, just stop me. And, uh, you know, we'll, we can, we can kind of go through it that way, too. So if you guys have something you feel like would be beneficial, just stop me, okay? Absolutely. Um, so first of all, guys, if you um, – I always hit that present. Here we go. Um, first off, if you guys do want, uh, you know, I've got a little extra value out of here. So if you want to take this URL, uh, I'll give it to you right at the top of the, uh, of the hour here. So if you want this, just use this quick bitly short link. And I've got a Google Doc inside there that's got a bunch of extra GMB signal hacks that are really strong signals that you can use to, you know, rank your client's map hacks or uh, your client's Google listing or your own. Um, so a quick agenda. I'm going to kind of talk about our green hat SEO strategy today. Um, we've just perfected this over really a little over 10 years. It just keeps working and working better. And then as Google's algorithm has, uh, has evolved over the last, say, eight years or so, we've kind of evolved this, this strategy along with it. So I'm going to talk to you about that. It's going to be really important for, uh, for everyone um, who, who either handles SEO, does SEO, or sells SEO to kind of understand this at a high level. Um, and then um, I'm going to talk about those kind of three major components. And then I'm going to give you the easy button reveal at, on, on the second half of today's uh, session together. Um, real quick, um, quick temperature check. On a scale of one to four, just so I can, uh, Matt and I can both know a little bit about who's here today. How would you rate your level of SEO experience? There's no pressure. Beginner, if you're a beginner, say put one in the chat box, two if you're an intermediate or that's how you'd rate yourself, three if you feel like you're advanced level, and four if you're like, hey, I'm in guru status, All right? Just let us know a little bit so I can understand, you know, who's here today. Uh, looks like we've got about 80 some people here, so that's a great audience. Let us know who's here. Just put a one in the chat box if you feel pretty, like, hey, I'm a pretty beginner. Pretty good mix, Lane, pretty good mix. Lots of twos and threes. So I, I, I can tell you this is really, really smart. SEO people on, awesome. on this session, some fours in here, a cool. um, couple of ones, and that's fine too. But uh, this is, I would say this is more of a advanced. Yeah, to advanced. Yep. Yep. All right, good. So I'm going to move quickly through um, through this the, the, the slide deck and through the, the things that we're going to, to cover. Um, 
again, if, if Josh or, or Matt, if you guys have anything you want to say as we move through this, just let me know. All right. So the green hat SEO methodology, Matt and I came up with this term like a couple of weeks ago as we were kind of talking through this because calling it green hat because it's really evergreen, right? This has been working for 10 years. And the first steps of this are really kind of one time components of the SEO methodology. And number one, I always use this analogy. Um, uh, um, it was Buckminster for, or uh, W. Edwards Deming used this with the Japanese when he taught them how to build quality into their automaking industry. He said that 90% of your result comes from the first 10% of your process. And an SEO, if we get the keyword and competitive intelligence wrong, we're, we're going to be getting, it's like that's like kind of our map or our blueprint. And if we get that wrong, we're going to end up in a, in a, in with wrong outcomes. And so it's just really important to get your keyword and your competitive intelligence down right. That's going to determine a large component of the outcome because the intelligence that we get um, in this, in that first phase is then going to translate into great on-page SEO and GMB on-page or GMB optimization. So we're going to take those keywords uh, and the competitive intelligence that we got from that research phase. And then we're going to translate that into our website and into our GMB listing to really bake those keywords into as many places as we can, where it's natural, not force fitting it, not stuffing keywords, but just in a natural way, putting those keywords into our pages. Uh, obviously, the more relevant that we can be with that, uh, the better, right? We want to teach. If you can always understand that what we're doing as, as SEOs is we're, we're training or we're teaching a robot. We are training Rake Brain. We're training Googlebot. And so the more clues, the more signals that we give Googlebot, the better outcomes that we're going to see. We want to eliminate confusion, introduce clarity, and then just generate signals around the clear or clear signals around our our client's website and Google listing for ranking purposes. Number three, uh, quality content generation or authorship of quality content. This, I just, we were just in a little thread today in Facebook, one of the agencies asked, you know, should I, should I do duplicate content for two different sites? They're gonna be, you know, two separate sites but the same client with two different cities. And, you know, that this, this, this question kind of comes up a lot amongst, you know, in SEO circles and agency circles, is duplicate content okay? Should I use it? Should I not? If so, how much? You know, all that. I'll just tell you that our MO for going back eight years has been quality original content in all cases. And if we're ever going to experiment with duplicate content, it's not on a real agency client's domain, right? We're never going to risk their domain uh, with some duplicate content. We can test in a test environment to see how Google reacts, but I would never test on a live live companies domain, but as a general rule, always original quality content. Once you have quality content, um, you know, it's, I guess the reason for that is because it, it has to do with authorship. And we're going to get into authorship a little bit more deeply in a second. But when you author quality content, you're setting yourself up for huge success. And as agencies, when we're doing this for other companies and their brand, their company, their entity, it's important that we do a quality job, right? It's one of the big deliverables that we as agencies provide to our clients every month is just the, the content itself. Forget about where it's gonna go, just the content itself is a deliverable. And if you mess that up, it's really gonna, you're gonna give yourself a black eye. You're gonna give your client a black eye if they miss it and it gets published and it's not quality. So always demand quality content uh, when you're authoring it or whoever's authoring it for you. All right. So really, once you have the first two steps done, it's kind of a one and done, you do it well. I mean, there's some on-page SEO that you're kind of always do a little bit of, um, but generally speaking, one and two are set up in the first month or two. Once you've got that handled, then you just move on to numbers three, four, and five, which is just generate content, syndicate the content, and then authoritative signal generation around the content and around the company's asset, assets. Now, I was just talking with another company yesterday, another agency, and they do mostly link building for their SEO. And that's kind of how they've always sold SEO because in the past, really, SEO was a matter of just basically getting up some pages, maybe some content, maybe even some dummy content, and then just driving some really good authoritative links to those pages and you could rank them. 
over the years, obviously, Googlebot's gotten a lot better. It actually can read content now. But it, we've gotten a lot away from just pure link building as a component of ranking pages. So authority signal generation is not just about link building. Yes, that's a, a very important, critical part of uh, SEO, but it's not the only thing. So this is a very simple evergreen SEO methodology in a nutshell. High level, this is it. You can rinse and repeat every single month with uh, numbers three, four, and five, and it will provide it will provide lift in the rankings. It will drive map pack page one rankings, page one organic rankings. We've done this over and over for years and it just keeps working. That's why we call it green hat SEO. Forget about white hat, black hat, gray hat. Let's do the things that are always going to work. And Google has always been looking for good quality content. So the world according to Google search, according to their own quality ratings, when it indexes the main content of each page, it checks factors, okay? You'll see this word factors in a lot of different articles and research and blog articles about it. But when you see that word factors, it should just kind of ring like, hey, those are signals, right? Ranking factors are ranking signals. Googlebot is looking for signals. And so uh, when, um, when Googlebot is crawling a page or when a, a human being is manually reviewing a page, what are they told to look for? What is the, the, what is the bot looking for? Number one, what's the purpose of the page? Um, Matt can get into this maybe in a little bit, but the purpose of the page, you can really, really do a lot there with schema. So if you want to tell Googlebot the purpose of the page, use schema. Content quality and amount. Um, short form content really is not gonna rank nearly as good as long form content. So. Over a thousand words, always better than under a thousand words. If you're limited by budget, I would say go to long form content and then just reduce frequency a little bit, especially if you're not seeing uh, the rankings the way you'd like it, maybe adjust that a little bit. Instead of going five, 600 words and doing it twice a month, maybe go once a month with a thousand or 1200 words because the amount of content does matter. Obviously we've talked about quality already and we'll get into that why that matters even more. Uh, Googlebot's going to be looking for info about the website, info about the content creator. You're going to keep seeing this, this term, the creator of the content, the content creator. That is just simply Google's new code for author or authorship, okay? They stopped using that term. They now use content creator. That is simply a code for authorship. The reputation and, of both the website and the author, okay? Again, there's some big signals here that Google's giving us to what, of what we need to be paying attention to. User interaction with the, the page. These are the behavioral signals we'll talk about in a second. And then EAT. EAT stands for expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. Google has parts of its algorithm baked into looking for EAT, measuring for EAT, scoring signals for EAT, and then also it's also in its manual quality guidelines. Getting an EAT. So EAT has its roots in authorship, okay? So if you've never heard of this term before, EAT, do a little research on your own. I'm gonna give you some today. For those of you who are more kind of the intermediate to advanced, you've heard of this before, but understand that EAT has its roots in authorship. I'm gonna give you some, some, some uh, more information today on how to set up authorship kind of in a practical way on your websites, for your clients, for the people at the business. But understand that Google, the algorithm, is trying to tie content to individuals. It, it wants to, right? It's looking for tying who created the content, not just that the fact that we have the content, but who is the creator of the content, right? So who is really important to Google? And look at this. <clears throat> Within search results, information tied to verified online profiles will be ranked higher than content without such verification. All right, so what Google's telling us there is that its algorithm is programmed to verify profiles of authored content. And when it can verify the profile of an author of a piece of content, that content will be ranked higher than content that it can't verify who is tied to it, okay? So authorship, guys, is really, really important to getting better results for you and your clients. So 
This is directly from Google's quality guidelines, section three. It's copy and paste. I just highlighted a couple of things for us to pay attention to. Number one, like we just said, Google instructs its manual raters. It also has its algorithm automatically looking for the purpose of the page and then scoring for eat. Okay. So when it's crawling a page, it is going to be scoring for eat. It's looking for a level of expertise in the content quality, right? That's what's, you know, quality content level of expertise. Obviously, when we have, when we see poorly spun content, poorly written content, don't we all immediately make kind of a judgment about the level of expertise of that individual who wrote that piece of content, right? So poorly written content goes to expertise and scoring for that. The algorithm can absolutely read content and score for it as good or sometimes probably even better than a human being because it doesn't have the subjectivity that a human being may have, especially in today's politically charged climate. So Understand that expertise is about quality. Authoritativeness, again, about quality. Also, we can uh, establish more authority um, here uh, with st strategic uh, interlinking or linking to authority sources. So when we link to something online, we're actually creating a connection for Google. It's a signal. It's a link signal. Whether it's a no follow or do follow, that's a different issue. But when we put a link in our content, we're creating a signal and a connection for Google. Every time you connect a piece of content to a wiki article, a Forbes article, any kind of authority in the space, another page that is an authoritative page, you're creating an authoritative connection and you're creating a connection for Google to help with authoritative. So you can create authority by default by connecting to other people. I know in the seven figure group, we've actually talked about this in a different way. Dennis, you had done his training on how to kind of hijack other people's authority by getting video of yourself with them and mentioning them, right? And just borrowing on their authority. We can do the same thing by creating links to wiki articles and the like. Trust, trustworthiness is an important quality characteristic. So how trustworthy is this content? But hey, Lee, just, here, here, just to interject real quick, Yep. Um, Tony Ricketts from online marketing is saying, is authorship still supported? And I know like the actual traditional sense of authorship where we see the image of the person that comes up in the service isn't, uh, but Matt, and you were saying that it is, can you just talk about that real quick to address that? Sure. And I'm going to get into that in a practical sense here and Matt interject if you want, but yeah. authorship is 100% supported. It's actually, and that's why I'm, I'm saying here, Google is looking for it still when Google did away with the rich snip authorship snippets that which Josh, you were just re referencing, right? In, in the search, we used to see the author's picture. It was a really cool um, rich snippet uh, search result. They got, they did away with that like, I don't know, five, six years ago now. When, when they did away with that, I think the SEO community just thought, oh, well, Google's just got rid of authorship. <laughs> no, not even close. In fact, it's more important today than it was five years ago in terms of actual ranking. Forget the rich snippets. That was just a search result that they played around with and then just you know, kind of a feature they decided to, to uh, deprecate. But authorship is really important and we wanna be intentional about it with our clients and our SEO campaigns because we can tell that Google is looking for creators of content. So where I see the biggest miss so far in the SEO community is that we put out great content, we put out great content if we're doing that, um, but we're not tying it to an actual author's profile, an actual individual at the company. And so we're not giving Google that extra step and that extra connection that it wants and is looking for at, which is who's the author or the creator of the content. It goes through in both bullet points here, who's responsible for the content, who's the creator of the content, again, who's responsible, and then look at this. Google put this in there in, in their in their manual quality guidelines here. It says links to help with reputation research will be provided. Now we would normally just read and, and, and read past that and just move on and go, oh great, great. All right. Let's not think here for a moment that there's manual, a manual a person sitting at Google doing manual re reputation research to provide it to the manual rater who's doing a manual rating about a page, right? 
Google's algorithm is providing links of reputation research that its own algorithm has already done and culled through and is going to provide those links to the manual rater who's going to be sitting there to sit down and actually rate a page manually. So Google's algorithm is already looking for those authorship profiles, looking for who's connected to this content, and if it can find any content that that same person is also responsible for, it's going to provide that to the rater. So uh, Google's algorithm is going deep into looking for connections of between content and people. Hey, Any just out of curiosity from the group, one in chat, if it's news to you that this uh, document exists where someone's looking at it and like it explains kind of what the, what the viewer is looking for. Yeah, a couple of, couple of ones in here. If somebody wanted to review that, how do you access that? Or is that something that's only if you're a quality guidelines reviewer? Yeah, so we can we can uh, go right out to uh, Google and just type in Google's Google quality. Man, I can't spell here. Google quality guidelines. And you'll find some different links to the whole PDF of them here. I, I had a link to them before, but... Within here, you'll find a link to the whole PDF of the entire document that Google gives to its manual raters when it's instructing them how to conduct a manual review. A couple questions here. Um, how do you create the authorship? How would you how would you link authorship? You're going to talk about that a little bit. Yep. If so you don't need to address it right now. Yep, I'm going to get right into that here in a second. So, real quick, let's go back here. Let me go back here. Go back one step. All right, so. Quality content generation and authorship. Let's go to syndication and then we'll go to signal generation and I'll, I'll get into authorship. So here's just a quick example of a content syndication network. So once we've got quality authored content, we now want to get that content everywhere we can. So uh, we want to, so if you're doing SEO, one of the, the next step, once you've got that article, and this is where Josh and I kind of connected about 18 months ago was, He's like, well, we're, we're producing this content every single month. And I'm like, great, now what's happening with it, right? Um, and, and that's where it's, it gets difficult because we've got this content, we publish it to the blog. It's kind of been a best practice. Let's do, if we're doing SEO, let's produce a blog article around the keywords every month and let's publish it to the blog. Well, going back eight, nine years, what we did started doing was not only putting it to the blog, but then pushing that content everywhere on other high authority profile sites, blogs, and even digital assets like Google Stacks, Google Drives, things like that. And that all of that content that was syndicated out was all pointing back to our target site that we're trying to rank and build the authority for. So content syndication is not a new strategy. It's not like I'm teaching us something new um, here at all. Um, it's just was a simple it was a very simple but important component of our SEO methodology going back eight, nine years was quality content generation, quality content syndication. Now, what I found was that worked really, really well between like 2013 and 2016, but around 2016, it just got harder and that content syndication was still good, but we weren't getting as much mileage out of it. And so I knew link signals was really important and that was really where we got into the idea and the concept of signal generation. So going back to, I keep doing hitting the short button, going back to 2013 or so, Moz came out with this idea of the, the local ranking factors and, um, and the, signal, the, the signal categories for map pack rankings. So I, I kind of latched onto this, like I said, back in 2013 or so, and I'm like, this makes sense. And so what I baked into our green hat SEO methodology besides content syndication was signal generation. So uh, to complete the loop, what we started doing then with the content and the syndicated content that went out to a bunch of other sources, we also looked for ways that we could generate, purposely generate signals in these different categories. And in the beginning, it was it was just manual. I was like, all right, well, we need software for this. Some of this is manual. I gave you guys like some GMB hacks early on that are manual, you know, in, in, um, in nature. But I also was look, kind of eagerly looking for and longing for ways to automate this because honestly, generating these signals every single month was the goal. And I knew 
kind of by, you know, in the beginning, you know, that if we did this, I had a very good feeling it would work. And, and as we practiced it over the years, it worked really, really well. We were using software, human beings, and content to generate signals in all of these different categories. And these categories and the weighting of them in terms of the influence on the rankings did change and has changed over the years. But these eight signal categories have not changed since 2013. And so that was really, and still is today, our goal with every single SEO campaign is that every single month, we want to generate signals in every one of these categories. And obviously not all signals are equal. We can generate authoritative signals or we can generate weak signals. We can generate quality signals or we can generate you know, um, spammy signals. And so um, we know that if we wanna satisfy Google's hunger for eat, we've gotta have quality content. Um, if, if to get that expertise, that authority, that trust. And then if we can get our content and we can generate signals with authority in different ways and with different sources, it's going to move the needle. And it has, and it does. This is a recipe for success month in and month out. Now, Google's gotten very sophisticated with the map pack. And we all know how important this is to making the phone ring for our clients. When you can get a Google listing into page one map pack rankings, you're gonna be your client's hero. They're likely, Josh talked about, you know, churn, attrition, keeping them or client retention. When you can move the needle, your chances of retention go way up. If you can't move the needle, they're way down. And we all know that's obvious. Uh, so moving the needle in the map pack is really the most important piece of the puzzle. In almost all industries and niches, the, the number one driver of phone calls, leads, directions, web traffic is that map pack spot in number one, two, or three. Um, you, yes, ads get a component of that overall, you know, saturation of who, you know, who clicks where on page one. Ads get a piece of that. Maps get a piece of that. Organic gets a piece of that. But 60 to 70 percent of all the clicks on page one are going to the map pack. And so if we want to make the client's phone ring and get, give them more leads, we've got we've to nail that. So Google's got a special local uh, kind of algorithm for local SEO or for the map pack. And so it goes through and it looks at proximity, it looks at relevance, and it looks at prominence. These are the three components here. Proximity, how close is your place of business for the person searching? Um, there's not much you can do. I mean, the business location is the business location, right? So you as the agency, we can't change that, that location. It is what it is, but we can use zip codes and geo coordinates in our content um, to, to send signals, factors to Google to let Google know, hey, this Google services other things. You can also do some cool things with Google My Maps and driving directions from other points of interest around the business into the business, embedding those maps, using those maps in different places with different assets but we want to drive proximity signals to Google if we want to rank in a proximity around that, that listing. We've all probably seen those nice grid, uh, grid, um, grid reports you can get from some of the different software out there. But if we want to light that up with green because we're ranking further and further away from that listing, we've got to send proximity signals to do that. Relevance, how relevant is our search term for the business or the business category that it's, that's listed, especially the primary category. Um, optimized content and op on-page signals are really important. Using your business categories and your content and section headings, niche citations, review and content velocity. All of these things will determine relevance. Relevance is a great way for us to train Googlebot with our content and everything that we do in our, inside of our content. Prominence is all about authority. You know, it's how prominent, how authoritative is that business as compared to the competition? So what we really want to do is drive authority here to build or, or to lay, to raise prominence of, the, of the, the entity or the business. And so the EAT profile, authorship is really important here. Every time I say EAT, we think authorship. Uh, brand mention, so naming the company. Just if, if it's Joe's Plumbing, then it should be Joe's Plumbing. We want to mention the name of the business as you know, often um, because that raises, those are pr prominent signals. 
Link signals are important. Uh, the number of reviews versus the competition. Um, all of those things are, are important to, to raising the authority of the client's entity and its related website and GMB listing. All right. So someone asked here, go ahead. Anyway, there's a couple questions here about what do we do when the client is service-based? Like we work with plumbing companies, April works with deck builders. Um, a lot of us like uh, Tony works with landscape companies. Um, and usually they're gonna have a warehouse somewhere, may or may not be in the city, um, but we want them to rank on the map. You know, is there any way around that? Uh, around uh, around their, uh, a, 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 let's say a, a unfortunate location? Yeah. Yeah. So yes, you can create, there are some virtual address components that were um, mailing you know, that are in the gray area. Um, there's right ways to set them up and wrong ways. That's a whole different maybe webinar. And, and I think maybe we can maybe talk about this coming Thursday, at Google and uh, Josh and the GMB. The GMB yeah. April and the others, what I would say, we work with home service companies. So uh, we try and find companies that actually are, are a little more established. So they do have a warehouse in the city that we want to rank them in. Um, or we encourage them to rent a legitimate office, even though it's a big expense. Hard to get around the legitimacy of an office in the city that you want to rank on Google Maps, right? So you need a location so that you can claim the listing, so that you can build the citations, so that you can build the prominence and everything else Lane's going to talk about. Um, if they're working from home or from a completely virtual environment, that's going to be a, it's going to be a challenge. So anyways, I don't want to detract from what we're doing, but I wanted to make sure that that question got, got addressed. So go ahead. Yeah, and it's an important piece to this puzzle as it, come, as it pertains to helping your clients get more visibility, drive more leads. And we can talk about that in a separate session. But yes, there are solutions. There are ways around either a home address. I never like using a home address because uh, if you're going to do citation building, uh, even if you're going to hide it in Google, you still got to use the, the address. And, you know, that address, if, if they use it for their, their incorporation of their business and their state with the Department of State in their, in their home state where they're where filing or incorporating, that home address is now a public record and you're, you're, you're telling the world where you live and it's, none of that's good. So there are ways around it to use, you know, virtual or mail, mailing address only type of solutions that we can talk about in a different, uh, you know, um, setting. So, so bottom line on this, what I'll say is there are ways around it. There are exceptions to every rule. To rank in the three pack on maps, they probably need a real location, a commercial location and the address where they want to rank, right? With lots of citations, with lots of reviews. Um, that doesn't mean they can't rank organically in the non-paid listings below the maps, right? That's a different thing. That's a whole different SEO strategy. Um, so Tech Grain is asking about nearby now, that will help you with your organic listings and rankings, not probably on the Google map rank. So yep. that's enough on GMB. We're going to do a whole nother session next week on GMB hacks, which are going to be awesome. That's getting ranked in the map. Um, today's really more around your overall SEO strategy. Yeah. And I'll, I can definitely cover that on Thursday too, just in terms of how, how we, you know, some of the strategies we use to properly set up a virtual address that won't get flagged versus using a virtual address or a UPS door or something like that, that will get flagged or suspended almost immediately. So, um, all right, so someone had asked, how do we set up authorship and how do we link it to a WordPress site? Um, I know a lot, most of us use WordPress that and, and we do in our SEO. So I'm you know, linking our authorship to a WordPress site. Um, all right, there we go. Um, so first of all, you wanna create an account on gravatar.com. You wanna complete that profile. I'll show you guys this here in a practical sense in just a second. Complete the profile then use that same email address that you set up the authorship profile on Gravatar as a author or administrator level uh, user on the WordPress site, complete the profile on the WordPress site, and then you can link those all together in a nice extra loop using a service like About Me or Linktree. Um, and I'll give you this example now. So this is something you wanna do with at least one person at every client you're doing SEO for at least one, certainly better to have more because um, Google's looking for authors. And obviously part of authority is the author is the root word, right? And so uh, the more authors we have at an, an existing company, a, 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 an entity, that's a, a, at least a demonstration of more authority because you know companies that have more authors versus less. And, and, and I'm telling you guys that because 
Google's looking to make these connections between individuals and content and entities and individuals. That's why companies and sites like Glassdoor and Indeed have just blown up on page one over the last three or four years is because Google is matching individuals with where they work and that's what they want to do. So when you do this and you feed Google this information, you're, there are so few people doing this like this, it's just gonna give you a leg up. So, so you would recommend for a client choosing the, the, the owner or the key face of the company and setting up their whole profile and building this authorship around them for their authority. Correct. Yep. So gravatar.com. So you just go to gravatar.com and it's, it's linked with wordpress.com, but I'm just showing you my personal profile, right? My personal authorship profile here. Um, so I can edit it here and add stuff to it. And that's what you want to do. You want to just, you know, register for the free profile and then fill this all out. Why? Because once I have this, then when I go into my WordPress user account, whether I'm an admin or I'm an editor or an author, um, it's going to be tied to the same email address here. Once I link it, my email address to my user account here, Google's going to automatically pull in um, my Gravatar profile information and connect it to my user account in WordPress. Okay. So first step is to go get your Gravatar account, fill it out completely. You have other things you can do here. Um, you have a photo gallery, you can add websites, you can add background, you can add contact info, uh, verified services. You can connect your Facebook, your LinkedIn, other things like this if you want. And then once you have your profile, um, you know, then now you're kind of set here. Now let's go to WordPress and let's just set, make sure our user account or create a new one if you need to, that's tied to that same email address. Okay. So that's really the simple way to do this step right here. And right you do here. this for each, for each of your clients. So if I've got, you know, 50 plumbing companies I work with, I find the owner of that company. I set them up as a user on, or on their WordPress site. I set up their Gravatar, get their picture, their bio, link it all up. That's going to make them more authoritative and more ranking. I would love to know, like, because we got a lot of smart SEO people on this on this call. How many of you, one, if you're doing something like this for your clients, two, if you're not? Because um, two, I think two is probably pretty common, which means there's an opportunity to do something the rest of the SEOs out there aren't. Um, so cool stuff. Yeah, great. Lots of twos. So this is a new, kind of a new thing that, that we can all run with. All right, so you know that's really the the simple kind of one two one the, the first step and the second step is just create the gravatar, then add it to your user account. Then once you have it, you can do step five, which is to have something like an about me. So like here's my about me profile. You can see I've got links to all of my different social profiles. Again, authorship, think connection, think make make it easy for Google, make connections for Google, send signals to Google around authorship, and so. You can just create these different link trees and other, you know, kind of separate but different, you know, service where you can kind of aggregate profile links around a profile. It can be around an entity or a person. Both are entities. In Google's world, a person is an entity and a company is an entity. They're both seen the same way from the, the perspective of Googlebot. So then you can use these different links uh, like Linktree or your About Me profile, and you can actually put those links you know, in your, in your bio, in your LinkedIn profile. And again, creating inner connection, again, leading Google down, hey, this is a profile. And then once we start doing the monthly content generation, right, part of that, that, that evergreen SEO strategy, now we're tying that content every month, not just publishing it, but we're tying it to an authorship profile. So a couple of questions in here, I think that will be relevant. April's asking, can, we, can the person have multiple email addresses that they use on Gravatar? Or would they use a different email for their main company? You can uh, uh, connect multiple emails um, to a Gravatar profile. Um, I would, uh, in a best practice, if you really are a person who's got like two unique authorship profiles, let's say one's for a book and a blog, and then one's for a company that you own that's in a completely different space, I would separate them out instead of trying to weave them together. Um, yeah. clarity. Well, if you've got a generalist agency and you've got a niche agency, you'd set up a different one for the niche on Gravitone. I, I would. Yeah. Matt, do you have any, uh, any, any opinion on, on that particular nuanced question? Um, I mean, I, I can speak to some of the, 
the case studies that we've been doing. Um, either strategy works. That would probably be the, the easiest one to implement for most people, uh, depending if you have, um, you know, knowledge specifically with entity IDs. So if you, if you establish a singular profile with a very specific entity ID, you can then, you know, distribute that across multiple email addresses, phone numbers, addresses, which, you know, people that, for instance, on LinkedIn, you may own one or two companies, you may consult or be on the board of another company, and then it gets very confusing. So for Google, one, one you want to have one profile. profile. Yeah. Um, and you, your profile um, can be consolidated uh, in LinkedIn as well as, uh, you know, your own private web page. Um, and then you want to do a proper interlinking strategy where you're mapping all of those entity IDs uh, to that one common location, whether it's a, a WordPress site that's dedicated to you as an individual, as a professional, um, and not, not specifically to a, a particular company, business, organization, nonprofit. Really, that gets really complex and confusing, and that's uh, something we're working on solving um, in, a, in an automated sense because it's extremely complex. There's many different variables that enter into that picture, but both work. Uh, the easiest is what Lane was referencing. We're trying to solve uh, the probably the, the, the better option through automation because it's too complex and too time consuming to do on a manual level. So theoretically, what we would do is for each of our clients, we'd find the figurehead, we'd set up a Gravatar, a link tree, and about me, and we would sync that to their WordPress account. So when we're posting through their site on WordPress, all of that's being attributed back to that company and that individual. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and then you can like, you know, you know, in, you know, in the content at the bottom, I always like to have like about the company and a little snippet about the company. You can actually start putting in a little snippet about the author, you know, about the author and then about the company and the about the author description, you know, April Edwards, you know, so, so the, you know, got, got the little description there, highlighted her name and then linked to her about me profile in one article. And the next article link to the link tree article, the next one link to her authorship profile on the WordPress site, just, you know, vary that and start sending signals to Google around that author and, and letting Google know, hey, here's an authorship profile. Here's the same author with a, another authorship profile on this, you know, and just keep connecting that for Google. Google loves to not match individuals with content and authorship. Yeah. Diversify the links. Yep. Yeah. So wrapping up this first section here, guys, really, this is the green hat SEO strategy or methodology that, that just keeps working. It's evergreen. Thus, you know, the term green hat SEO, it will just keep working. Generate quality content, be clear and concise with your on-page and your GMB optimizations, set that up one time. And then in, you know, in months two and beyond, just keep rinsing and repeating steps three, four, and five. Generate quality content, tie it to an author or offer authorship and eat syndicate that content, distribute that content, and then generate signals in as many ways as you possibly can using that content. And that will move the map pack rankings and organic rankings. It has been, it will. It's just a matter of execution on these steps every single month. Questions on that before I kind of, we kind of segue and transition. I think we've been, I think we've been hitting the questions as we go. So I would just keep, keep going. All right, sounds good. Stop me again if we need to. So for those of you who, you know, are against, you know, um, you know, any type of solution on a webinar like this, I've given you the education. You could, you can be free to leave here. That's the, 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 the educational component of this in, a, in most ways. All right. What we're going to transition to is, and we've got a lot of our customers on the webinar today too, as well is that Matt and I launched Quantum Newswire in late 2018 to help to really, we built it as a signal generation engine and an authorship engine for content syndication and distribution purposes. Um, we've had, you know, we have about 400 agencies around the world that have been using it to get a drive map pack and organic rankings. Uh, Josh is a heavy user. We've got a lot of other users on this webinar today that are, are using it. Um, and, and we really built this to, to really help with automating a lot of the more manual parts of this, the signal generation part, which was just manual work and a lot of different pieces of software kind of bundled together that didn't talk to each other. 
And so um, what, we, um, what we've had up until now is Quantum Newswire, and today we're officially rebranding to Quantum Signals. We do have a final brand that will be going live in the end of the year. We didn't want to release our final brand until we have the feature set that it's intended for. So we're, but Quantum Newswire, we're not just a PR or a newswire type of service. We really have never been that. However, um, it's now appropriate to rebrand as we launch a new feature today. And really, it'll go live for all of our users on Monday. Um, but we're really happy to kind of announce the rebrand of, of Quantum Newswire to Quantum Signals. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through the things that you guys have already heard before. Some of you may have used other, other press release or traditional online PR services. We simply kind of flipped that industry on its head, but now we've moved beyond just simply PR or Newswire types of distribution services. We really have built this to be a signal generation engine for SEO purposes. And so what makes quantum signals different from you know, the, the traditional PR services, number one, we built quantum signals, quantum newswire for agencies and agencies only. Um, all of these other services will take your, your clients as a customer or you as an agency as a customer. All of them bar none will take a business directly as a customer, um, uh, not just agencies. And so, you know, we believe that number one, that loyalty to our agency customers and not being competitive, competitor with them is important, but more importantly, we have been an agency. We still run a white label agency today. And so we've, we've had that test lab to understand what agencies need who are delivering SEO in a real world manner every single month. We built it to be hundred percent private label and we put sourcing at, the, at the, the center of the strategy. Why? Because EAT is an authorship is important and executed the wrong way, which is what all these guys do. They steal the authorship from you by taking the content, the press release, the article and distributing it, or I'm sorry, publishing it to their media room first and then beginning the distribution to the media sites. That steals the authorship from your client who we're trying to rank and puts authorship in the lap of the, the, the PR service. That's wrong from an SEO standpoint. So we've, we've flipped that on its head. We have a live Google map display and we, in the beginning, so to kind of jump to what, what we've changed here, we've had a WordPress plugin that we developed, which was unique for us as a service in the industry up until now. The WordPress plugin introduced automation for the process. Again, that was part of our, our goal was to allow agencies to scale in SEO campaigns by creating automations and doing things that were, were manual before and, and automating it. So um, the, the WordPress plugin automated some things. It also gave us a leg up in terms of schema markup and things like that but it came with its own set of, of issues and problems, namely that we cannot control all the different versions of WordPress and themes and plugins that people have installed on their own WordPress sites. And it created a myriad, I mean, a cascade of support questions or issues that really had nothing to do with our plugin, but were just as a result of all different types of environments of code on WordPress sites from themes and plugins and different versions of PHP and you name it. It's an infinite number of variants and it just created a cascade of support issues. And it also limited the automation to people or agencies who only had WordPress sites. So as of today and really officially Monday, we're going live with our official uh, media room um, app channel. Uh, our managed enterprise media room is a major feature release. It's going to re replace the plugin the automation that the plugin did, and then even more so from an SEO standpoint. So we're, let me just go into larger mode so we can see here again. Um, so we're introducing the branded app channel feature for all of our existing customers, all of our new customers. The branded app channel is going to be literally a, a, a direct app integrated with your client's own domain uh, in one of two ways, or um, you can actually use one of our do domains in a custom subdomain if need be or was, was ever desired. Um, with uh, So what are the branded apps or channels? 
The media rooms will be the first of many new app channels that will be going live. These app channels, think of them as distribution channels, think of them as content channels, think of them as signal channels or signal hubs on your own client's domain. So media rooms will be the first of many new app channels that we will have for SEO and signal generation. All of the new app channels, starting with media rooms, will be able to be deployed in up to three different ways, which I can show you in a second. Very easily, since Quantum is now hosting the app or the software, we're not going to be dependent on WordPress. These custom branded apps will be additional signal hubs on your client's domain. That's really, really important because we're trying to rank the client's domain. We're trying to build domain authority to rank their site and their GMB listing. And so instead of pushing content to a PR media room, we want to push that content and author the content on the client's domain first. We're going to be able to do that with direct app integrations for functionality and authoritative signal generation using digital brand assets and then connecting them together on the client's domain to drive more domain authority and entity authority. What are some of the branded app examples? Well, like I said, we've got Enterprise Media Room with SSL on Amazon CloudFront going live today through the weekend for everyone for sh by Monday. Um, these are deployable media rooms with immediate SSL provisioning, a $200 to $300 SSL certificate hosted on Amazon CloudFront with CDN for speed loading and a real enterprise experience. What will happen is just like what's happened with the WordPress plugin up until now. What that workflow looks like is you'll put the uh, content in Quantum, you'll optimize it there, you'll hit publish. The content will go through that quick review approval process on our side. Once it's approved and published, it'll publish to the media room first. Our media rooms are integrated with Google Search Console. We will ping Google Search Console, the software will, to canonicalize that, that authored um, article on the client's domain and then pause for 24 hours like it did with the WordPress plugin and then begin the distribution or syndication process to the live media sites. These live media sites all have a DA between 45 and 90. They're way better than the average guest post blogging site or service. And so we're immediately getting content or syndicating it out to a series or a network of a tight network of high authoritative media sites. And we're doing that through the media room automatically uh, in this example. Another example will be a LinkedIn app, which is really done. Uh, we're just putting some final touches on that. You'll be able to connect your client's LinkedIn page to their company account in Quantum. And then you'll be able to stream posts You'll be able to, you know, on their domain, they'll be able to, people will be able to come to the, that page on their domain and like a post, share that post, things like that. Okay, so what we're doing, guys, is we're taking signals that would otherwise just be on LinkedIn.com or on Facebook.com, right? And we're now amassing those signals and creating new signals around that same content that's already been existing somewhere else and driving authority for Facebook and or LinkedIn or Pinterest. And now we're beginning to amass the assets, the content, the digital assets of a brand or an entity all on their own domain. We have a Facebook reviews app, an Instagram app, a Google My Business reviews app, a Google Asset Stack app, a Pinterest app. You'll be able to deploy all of these branded apps as soon as you activate them to in one of three ways. Uh, way number one or method number one through a direct site integration. So if you're used to in, in, installing tracking code or a Facebook pixel or even a widget of some sort, you just take that code, we'll give you the code, you'll place it on the page that you want the channel to go live on. If it's the media room, say news and media page, you'll integrate that or you'll just paste that code into an HTML uh, you know, code box and publish. As soon as you do that, that media room will go live on that page hosted by us. I'll show you an example here in a moment. Uh, number two, you can just set up your client's domain or subdomain with one CNAME record. And within about 10 minutes, we've tested it. It's provisioned globally uh, in terms of DNS records propagating. SSL uh, is provisioned. And that media room goes live on www.yourclientsdomain.com. 
And then the last piece is if you don't have either of those two or you just want to use uh, number three, you can deploy a media room or a, the branded app, excuse me, um, to company name that media room app and we have a, a number of other um, like white labeled or private labeled um, uh, domains that will be uh, be available now why is this why so the media room let's focus on the media room forget about the other app channels that'll be coming live in may and june um, let's focus right now on managed enterprise media rooms why is this important why did we do this besides the fact of you know the weaknesses with wordpress why? Okay. Number one, these are fully branded and integrated media room on your client's domain. You're now building a new asset for them that will rank on page one independently of their individual website. If you choose uh, the integration that I just uh, described to you here on the branded domain or subdomain, right? So number one, uh, we're going to put it on their domain. If you use the direct site integration, obviously it's going to be integrated directly into their main site. Either is fine with us. The, we believe the better, the best practice will be to create it on the client's subdomain at www.theirdomain.com and launch it there. But you can even do both if you want. Why else? Because you're going to build brand equity with quality content and thousands of signals being distributed to this media room and then going out to media sites. And then the way that we'll be interlinking these and the way that we'll be marking these pages up automatically for you with perfect schema. Our software team has ingested the entire schema library. They are experts at this. And so we're executing schema on behalf of, which is really complicated. Uh, and it's even more complicated to do it right. So we're going to do it for our agencies and your clients automatically through these um, app channels and through the media room. Let me just add, let me uh, add a couple things. So just by a uh, show of uh, number, those of you that are using schema um, on an ongoing regular basis, how many of you are using a, a plugin such as um, uh, Yoast, Yoast or All-in-One SEO? Uh, one, if you're using Yoast or All-in-One and, and two, if you're doing something else other than that. Okay, so a lot of ones and twos are people are using schema. So the reason I ask is, you know, Yoast obviously it's a huge company. They've been doing it for many years. They do a pretty good job. The problem is, you know, you can't customize. They, they can only accommodate for, yeah, rank math is great. Um, and it's, it's obviously better than doing nothing. The problem is one, one size doesn't fit all. And they're, they're doing their best to accommodate all situations. Um, and so we have a very, very unique and specific emphasis on uh, niches. So there's, I mean, there's such a large uh, number of industries that are very niche. Uh, many of you, you guys serve those. You know, this is one of the, the key pillars of, of Josh's system is really focusing on a niche. And we're doing the same. We're trying to, uh, of course, you know, there's, there's the broad uh, concept, but we really are focusing on niches to help those of you that are specifically part of the seven-figure um, philosophy uh, to really hone in specifically on each of your individual niches. And in the upcoming days and weeks, uh, you know, we're going to really open up a, a, a client feedback loop to where you guys can make specific requests, whether it's physicians or service industry, whatever it is, we're going to directly and specifically accommodate that. In addition to building the brand assets and the brand equity for on behalf of your agency through automation for your clients, because in the end, it's all about client retention. And if you guys are directly responsible as agencies and directly in control of those brand assets, you're, I mean, client retention is gonna be a thing of the past because if they were to depart from you, a, a, lot, of, a lot of the management of, that brand, of those brand assets will be in your control as agencies. Now, no, no way am I trying to say that you, know, you should hold your clients hostage, but those of you that are professionals, and I know just, by the fact of you know this group, everyone is, um, you know you're going to do want to do the right thing for your clients, and at the same time, you know clients are still always looking for the you know what's the lowest cost, and they're not always looking for quality, unfortunately. So, a lot of the strategy that's built into this is to protect you as agencies. We've been there. We know how difficult it is to manage you know all the all of the clients and their expectations. So we want to help you guys through automation to really um, build brand equity through the asset management through the content. You know, there's, there's a dam coming, a digital asset manager, which manages your, 
your, uh, your images, your video, your written content, your PDFs, Google Stacks, all, or, all of that will be consolidated into, into individual channels so that you guys can manage that on behalf of your clients. And when I say manage, ultimately, you're going to have to sign in and make sure you know, things are connected because it's, so, it's mostly through automation, but I'll turn it back over to you, Lane. Yeah, let's let's talk about digital, the digital assets because and, and, and how this relates to media rooms. So this media rooms is not a new strategy. I want to introduce you guys to PR Newswire if you've never heard of them before. For those of you who know them, they're the giant in the room. They are the global giant in the PR and online PR industry. PR Newswire offers enterprise media rooms with a setup cost of $15,000, okay? Let me repeat that. If you want a media room through PR Newswire with the, with the, with the features that I just described to you on the previous slide, you have to pay PR Newswire $15,000 and then $5,000 annually to keep that up with the Newsfeed bundle, which is the Newsfeed automation, right? That, I, that was in that previous slide, okay? So complete news release automation, right? Now, now let, me, let me share this. They call these, you know, they basically go after enterprises, but obviously an enterprise about the only company that's gonna be able to afford that type of, of, of fee just to get a media room to go live online for them, right? Now, these media rooms that PR Newswire put out puts out are not even on SSL, guys, all right? I'm gonna show you one just as an example, right? Zillow as an enterprise has a media room with PR Newswire and here it is. Look at this, http zillow.mediaroom.com, okay? Simple, a simple page, nothing really extravagant about it. It's got its automated news feed here of the articles that were syndicated through, um, uh, through PR Newswire, through Cision System. And then some, you know, other links here and what have you. But I, a simple thing like it not being SSL was what we saw, a, you know, really kind of critical, a critical miss, right? And they're selling these for $15,000 and then $5,000 annually. So there's obviously, there was, when we saw this, we, we knew there was something more of this than just, you know, uh, some news automation. This is what big companies do. They're paying attention to their brand their entity, their digital assets, and they understand the value of putting out a place where their digital assets and their content resides for other people, the media, to come and visit and, and have access to those things. So there's a real purpose behind this. It's just that Cision did this from a PR and branding standpoint and, and didn't even think about SEO. Obviously, if they were thinking about SEO in 2021, this wouldn't exist, right? So there's like no SEO considerations here, but they're charging that kind of, of premium to a business, all right? What we're doing with our managed enterprise media rooms is empowering our agency clients to bring an enterprise class media room solution at a fraction of the call, like for pennies, right? You know, uh, so, um, and to bring it to SMBs and make it affordable for them and or just include it in your SEO efforts. So um, I, we, we wanted to share this with you guys so you understand there's already a market for this. There's already a market value assigned to this. Charge whatever you want for these, but understand what they're already being sold for as an inferior solution or product in the marketplace today. Okay. So, what can you do? You can provide prospects as, a, uh, as an account holder of Quantum Signals or Quantum Newswire. You can provide prospects or clients the cost of the PR Newswire enterprise media rooms. Show them this. Say, look, this is what we're doing for you. This is what enterprise companies are paying for this. We'll deploy this for you for Y instead of X. You'll be able to launch those media rooms in your back end starting Monday, we're gonna show you that here in a second, in about five to 10 minutes for only five credits per month. I'm gonna, I got this note here for all of our existing account holders, all of your company slots are a media room where you'll be able to turn them into a media room. So there'll be no additional cost for our existing customers. All of your company slots will equal a, a media room that you'll be able to just turn on in one of or all three ways for all of your clients, right? And no cost. And no additional cost, right? So 
How, what else can you do? You'll be able to position your agency as the experts in the digital PR strategy space as well, because you have an enterprise level media room and a solution to syndicate, distribute their content to authoritative media sites, automate that or not. You don't even have to tell them it's automated to their media room once it's, once it's published. And there's going to be a lot of interlinking and perfect schema markup on all those pages that our SaaS is producing for you. You'll be able to provide PR consulting, aka the be the media contact of record, in addition to the media room technology to charge a substantial premium beyond your current fees for SEO. I, I think this is important, right? As an agency, you don't want, do you want, let me ask you this as a form of a question. Do you want your clients going to a different company for advice about their online PR strategy? Probably not, right? I, Put a one in the box if you would want that to happen, a two in the box if you say, no, I don't want my clients calling somebody else for advice on their digital PR strategy, right? I mean, we, we want to, to keep our client relationships and know that if they get introduced to another agency, even if it's a PR agency, maybe the PR agency also provides SEO and PPC. Maybe they have a preferred vendor or partner that they work with and that we could potentially lose that client because we're just leaving a, a piece of the strategy uh, open to somebody else to fulfill. Digital PR strategy, we're showing you guys the digital PR strategy. We're executing it for you in Quantum Signals by simply letting you put in the content and then hitting the publish button and walking away, right? Um, and it's going to be done for SEO purposes, not just vanity, hey, we got on ABC or NBC. So PR, Newswire, or Cision has set the market value for you. It's a high, high price ticket. Offer it wherever you see fit. Um, let me show you this in action. So we're, Matt, um, how should I do this? Just quick, quick, should I do it in our staging or should I do it in production? Oh, you can go live. Um, so it's live on Quantum Agency and uh, on um, Plumber SEO. You can go to either account. Okay. Also, as of today, you can go to app.quantumnewswire.com to get into our app, or you can also go to app.quantumsignals.io. Um, so, you know, we've, we've also done some pretty cool things with that. You can actually sign in either way and administer the app in, in, either, either, in either URL structure. Um, so let me go in here real quick. While you're getting that set, uh, I'll, I'll just add to that since we're talking about the domain. So some really interesting things. That, am I on? Yeah. Really interesting things have happened. Uh, we were under a massive hack for the past two weeks. Um, they did not successfully uh, penetrate our app, but we have some competitors that know what we're doing. Lane, you're in. Uh, you're back in staging. Yeah, I know. I'm just going to do it here because I've already got these things open, just okay. for time's sake. Okay. Um, so something really great that came out of it. Um, I don't believe uh, none of our competitors have any spies on this webinar. So. Um, one of the outcomes is we're, we're moving the platform to where you guys can, will be able to have your, your clients log into it. And obviously we are hyper, hyper sensitive to white label. There's a lot of companies that try to do white label and they don't do it right. Up until this point, it hasn't mattered because your clients don't have access. We have no, there's no dashboards. There's nothing for your clients to, to log into. Um, now that we've solved this very difficult technology challenge, uh, very in the very near future, in the next several weeks, you'll be able to add your own agency domain or brand. So you could use app. Uh, in Josh's instance, um, plumberseo.net. And that way, the entire app will be branded from a domain standpoint, from all logos for both yourself when you're using it as an agency, and when we have uh, user features such as dashboards and uh, content approval and so forth. Your clients will be able to log into the app. It'll be completely under your brand right. and domain. If you're familiar with high level and how that functions, it'll be basically the same type of function. Right, Matt? Yeah, yep. exactly. All right. So for the sake of time, you'll see in here, we're in this company screen here. Um, and so we're, we, we did this, we use Josh as a beta tester on this. So, we're in um, on, on, and I'm on in staging. So the images are not working because we're in staging. Just, just, you know, bear with us on that. But you got all these companies here. And for what I did here is for GF Bowman, you can come in here and you can see there's now a, 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 a icon here for integrations and then app channels um, icon. So if we click on app channels, just, uh, well, I guess I'm logged out now. Anyway, um, 
Let me find GF Bowman here. But it's not showing it to me now. I guess I'm logged out, Matt. Anyway, with GF Bowman, uh, let me know what I need to do here, Matt. But what we did is I, I, I created uh, it on, um, on our mediaroom.app. Um, we just quickly did a deployment. Um, let me know if I can log in again or not, Matt. And then once we deployed it, the media room basically went live. And here's the media room. It's on our own domain hey, here. No, no, I, you, you can just tell he's going to beat that guy in the head later. Right. Um, and then what I did as a quick demo is I embedded or I, I integrated the media room directly into a site page on, on WordPress. So for the sake of purpose, I didn't have access, obviously, to GF Bowman's site. I just took their media room here and put it into our WordPress site on Quantum Agency, just so we could see how it looks here and how it looks there. Again, like I said, the only thing that's not working uh, yet is the images because we're still on staging. So these images would just show the, show the thumbnails here, but you see we've got a map here. So this is a direct site integration, right? It's on the root domain. And this is a, um, a, a, uh, a hosted domain. And then the other one that we didn't deploy yet, which, cause it would require CNAME records would, would be the branded domain um, deployment. Matt, right. should I log third, in again or what should I do here? Yeah, the third option, you just need to refresh. So the third option is, is deploying a branded domain directly on the client's um, domain or URL by using a subdomain. So just go ahead and go to yeah, under, yeah, that's fine. Companies. And then just pick, just All right, pick, so a, pick a different one. Yeah, just pick another one. Let's just uh, take uh, all services. So. Here's the integrations. This is what you'll click on. And then you'll pick one of these three options or you can do all three. We're not gonna limit you to just one. So if you wanted to do the branded domain, we just choose a branded domain. Uh, WWM, let's just say it was all services online. I know that's not really it, but let's just say it was. Allservicesonline.com, we just hit request certificate. It's gonna immediately provision an SSL certificate and then give us our CNAME record. All we gotta do is, this is the, 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 the value, or I'm sorry, the name or the record, and here's the, the target or you know, what it points to or the value. So we go in and we add this one CNAME record to our DNS, the CNAME record, the value, and that's it. And then within about, we've tested this already, within test 10 minutes or less, this www.allservicesonline.com is live. All right, if we choose the hosted domain, um, then we would just say maybe all services. And then right now it's just one domain that you have a choice. We'll have multiple domains as choices in here. We hit requested domain. And literally within a few seconds, it's actually live and, and, and up and live. So you can click on it, <laughs> of course. Oh, um, go ahead, go back to that, that's fine. Okay. Go, go back to that link, yeah. Uh, let's see. Welcome. Go ahead and just change that to uh, media. Change welcome to media dash room. That's just a security thing right now. Media dash room. Now. If you set it up now. No. no. Okay. All right. Sorry, fail there, guys. Um, <laughs> it does work because we just deployed it, this one just a few minutes before the webinar today. So I don't know. We can look at that, but. Um, uh, and then, you know, we're in beta. So again, this will all be live and, and ready to roll on, on, on Monday. The branded integration is just request it. And then it gives you your code and you can select the height of, you know, the, um, the code. So, you know, the, the, the hey, media room there. And then once it's, once you take this code, you just copy it, close, you go to your WordPress site and you can see if I edit with Elementor. So again, the importance of this is that we're doing this on the client's domain. This is on their asset. And what we're able to do here, right, is there's just the simple code here. You can see it's not even, it's, there's no trace back to quantum here. It's just brand assets.app with a, a bunch of code there. So there's nothing there for quantum. And so 
the goal here, guys, was to make sure that we amass signals, going back to our core strategy, amassing signals on the client's domain or their subdomain or both. The subdomain is a very powerful strategy. We believe that'll be the best execution and you'll get the best results from that, but we've created the direct integration because we know some agencies and some clients are sensitive to everything being on the main site. So regardless of which one you want or which one you'd like, you can execute either one, but now we're, we're bringing this into the website the way our WordPress site, our, our plugin did before, but executed in a more seamless manner without WordPress limitations, without WordPress platform requirements, without any of the issues that come with WordPress and with better schema markup. Um, and so any of our cu current customers, you've been getting results up until now. We believe just the media room launch as a first step will actually improve results even more than what you've already been getting as these new app channels go live and we begin to amass more signals around that client's domain. You're gonna see domain authority going up even more, even qu more quickly, and you're gonna see your rankings just doing better as well. So I'm gonna stop there and uh, see if we have any questions that we haven't, uh, that we haven't uh, addressed here. If there's people that are on here today that want to, that want to get going, um, you can go to 7fa.quantumsignals.app, 7fa.quantumsignals.app. Um, that page is right here. And our pricing is right there on that page. Um, what we are doing for um, anyone who, who, take, who buys lifetime today or through the end of, of midnight, April 30th, we'll give you an extra $250 in bonus credits to action takers who, who, uh, who aren't account holders yet. Um, and you know, decide they want to invest in a solution like this to kind of automate a lot of this process that we went over earlier, uh, this content uh, syndication and signal generation process. The number four and number five was the manual lifting. Once we had the content written, doing all that just became a challenge. So if you, you can do it manually, you can do it with other software, that's great. It'll still work. So if you want, you know, if you, if you think quantum signals is a, is a uh, solution for you, that's how you can get going. Any questions? Elaine, we're, um, we have a hard stop in about 10 minutes. So yep. just to wrap it up, um, if anyone has any, uh, does any, is anyone interested in uh, a follow-up webinar? Cause this has obviously gone a little bit long. Um, we may want to, Josh, is, would we schedule another Zoom? Would you want to host it, or do, are you, should we set uh, set it up separately, or what are your I'll thoughts? I'll say, like, since I have to stop right at at three thirty, if you guys want to open another Zoom link to just continue Q and A, in case anybody has Q and A, um, oh, that might be a good option. Uh, I want to make sure everyone knows this isn't an affiliate situation. Well, I'm not selling this to make money for a seven figure agency or an additional revenue stream. This is a, a system that we use. That's a big part of the results we drive for our clients. Um, and so seven figure agency members, I wanted to make sure that if you don't have this platform, this could be a big part of how you can generate better, more consistent results for your clients. Um, could you walk through the, okay, so one question here was, does this replace the blog on the site? For us, it does. We use this, instead of just blogging as an activity metric, which doesn't get picked up, which doesn't drive any additional signals, um, we take our one blog per month or one piece of content, we push it through quantum, and then we're able to get all of the signals at, basically for the same effort we were doing before. Um, so it, it absolutely could. In, in, in that, that content, that blog article content, which used to just go to the blog, the blog on the, the client site, now it goes there first because it's still authorship is important. We talked about that, but now it goes out to a network of about 35 sites like I said, they have a DA, DR of 45 to 90. These authoritative sites and the way that the content is executed is generating super high authoritative link signals, on-page signals, Google My Business signals, and citation signals, namely. So uh, question real quick. Is, uh, so Josh was suggesting, Lane, that we create another Zoom link in case anyone else has any follow-up questions. Is anyone else, is anyone interested in uh, continuing the Zoom meeting um, after this meeting ends in, in the next seven minutes? One, if yes, and two, if no, just so we have an idea if we want to continue on. There's at least a couple. So if you could, you know, set up a quick Zoom link and, and drop it in here before we wrap up. 
Done. Okay. Yeah, there it is. I'll get that going as soon as we end here. So just give me, you know, a few minutes, guys, once we end here, and then I'll open that up and then we can, you know, continue to, to answer questions that people have. So Josh, you know, I'll, we're, we'll, we're done other than answering questions. So I'll let you, you know, wrap it up if you'd like, or we can entertain a few more questions if you'd like, whatever. Yeah, I think, I think bottom line, guys, you know, we want to drive better SEO rankings for our clients. Uh, the best way to do that is to consistently drive more links, more authority for the client base. Um, doing this as part of your monthly strategy for the client um, really moves the needle in terms of rankings, which is going to drive better results, which is going to drive better retention. Uh, but it also gives you an activity thing that you can point to. You can say, here's all the release that we did. Here's all the places that it got picked up. Um, and that, that's going to also help with retention. Uh, and so that's why this is a big part of, of our strategy and what we do. I'm really excited about the new media room um, and some of the new ways that we can syndicate content even further to amp the results even to that, into that next level. So this has been awesome. Thank you guys for taking the time to break this down and to kind of develop this platform, first of all, and then share it with the group. Um, let me know. I'll put the link after I ask this question again, but let me know. One in chat, if this has been helpful, you got some new ideas and insights on how to drive better results for your clients from an SEO perspective, um, a new tool that you can tap into. Yes, um, Lane, Matt, they liked it. They enjoyed it. They appreciated it. Um, good stuff. It was recorded, so we'll have this in the members area for you guys. Um, we'll make sure that you have access to it. Um, Don's asking if there's a statement of procedure and how we use it in our agency. Yes, there's a whole section on how we use quantum, kind of how we set up the content, how we structure the content, how we push it through. That's going to change a little bit with the latest iteration. Um, and we'll make sure that that's loaded into the members area for you guys as well. So it's like, yes, here's the tool. And here's exactly how we use it. And you can swipe and deploy that strategy in your, in your agency. So awesome stuff. Uh, last comment here in chat. There's the link to jump on a Zoom with Lane and Matt. And um, of course, they're, they're both elite mastermind members. So they're available in the Facebook group as well. If you want to tag them with follow-up questions or thoughts, um, they're here to help and they're here to support as well. Josh, thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone, for your time and attention. I hope you got some value out of it today and learned some new things. It looked like we, we definitely got some new, some new stuff that was, uh, wasn't on uh, people's radar before. So that's good. No doubt. Great stuff. All right, guys, have a great afternoon. We'll talk to you again soon.